says, you know, don't spare the rod. It'll dr drive rebellion far from them. And so what does the government of this United States say? If you, if you spank your kids, we're going to take them away from you. And, you know, as a kid who's is 61 years old, I can tell you this. Nobody would have been at home when I was a kid because everybody got spankings, amen? <laughs> I mean, the state would have had them all. We'd all, been, we'd all be living in the orphanages, you know, because it would, everybody got their, you got your, you got your bottom tanned, amen? Yeah. Amen? And so, I mean, that's just the way it was. And so you got the government saying, okay, God says, don't spare the rod, but we're going to tell you if you spank them, we'll take them away from you. And then the schools, uh, so used to, how many, how many was in school when you had paddles? I mean, I remember Mr. Hartman had this great big old paddle about that tall, had a big old hose in it. That's all I needed to see. I remember over Chester Knight pulling me and Junior out. We were making faces at each other and kept busting out laughing. He gave us a couple dirty looks sometimes. Did he give you a whipping, Junior? <laughs> he gave Junior a whipping, and, and Junior left, and... and uh, and I said, I'm so sorry, Mr. Knight. And he goes, he goes, he goes, do I bend over that, that uh, table there? And I said, I, I promise, Mr. Knight, I'm sorry. He goes, well, get back in that room. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's mercy. Everybody say mercy. Now, praise God. I, that that would have killed me. I'm telling you, I just wasn't. A junior could take it, but it would have killed me. But I'm just saying, we, we, now, and so now we've got a bunch of people that don't know any authority. Would you agree? Yes. And you know who is it? God is the authority. God is the authority. And when God says, do this, all he's telling, he's speaking to you. He's speaking to you. Not, not you know, when he tells you, uh, husbands love your wives like Christ loves the church. He's speaking to you. He's not speaking to your wife. Men, he's speaking to you. Take care of. Provide for. Meet her needs. Right? And when he says, wives, submit yourself to your husbands, that's to the Lord. He, he's not, and then the, you know what the women will do? Well, I'll submit to him when he starts treating me like, like Jesus. And God didn't, God's not talking to him. God's talking to you. God's talking to you. But see, we've been in about four generations of this no discipline stuff. And it's really showing up. It's really showing up. But there, 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 but God's saying, but but I'm going to get you as the son of God to stand in your place. But it's going to take courage. It's going to take courage for you to stand up and, and tell your, your your children or your your whoever wife or your husband no I am the head of the house I am the head of the house I mean it's not it's not a negotiable thing God has said it God has said it you know we, we want to talk about it well you know he, he's not he's not the sharpest tool in the shed it, God didn't say you're to evaluate it he said he's the head of the house that's my kingdom and a lot of people are struggle in their spiritual walk because they don't do the most simplistic things that God tells them to do. God's not telling you to evaluate. God's not telling you to talk back to your parents. <laughs> Amen? So anyway, this is happening even as we speak. That's Micah 4.1. Because this is going on, but, it, but I'm going to tell you, for us to be able to get into this place and for us to be able to stand as the sons of God in the earth, and the earth come back into perfect alignment. Because how many, how many know, like the shooting in Florida today, how many know that was not of God? I mean, but if it's not of God, who, who's perpetrating that? Who put that thought in those Muslims' mind and in their heart this morning that we're going to go and we're going to kill a bunch of people? We're going to kill them in the name of Allah. I'm going to tell you, it wasn't God. It wasn't 
It wasn't God because Allah is not God. Jehovah is God. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is the only true God. There's only one. Amen? And so, you know, we come on, church, wake up. I mean, we're so medicated. Everybody and their brother's on some kind of opiate or some kind of pain reliever. And God says you're so medicated that you've got lost in a spirit of witchcraft. But I say come out of it today in Jesus' name. We're not moving in a spirit of witchcraft. We're moving in the spirit of the resurrected Most High God. Amen? Amen. Say praise the Lord. Lord. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days, and that's right where we're at, that the mountain of the Lord's house, say that's me. You are the... You are the Lord's house, that the mountain, and mountain stands for government. Amen? Mountain always stands for government. The mountain of the Lord's house, praise the Lord, the government of God is taken over the earth. Amen? And we're not negotiating with the, with the Babylon nations. We're saying, no, we are the rightful owners of the earth because we are connected. We are the body of Christ. He came and he died to bring the earth, to take the earth back and we are his body and we are his spirit and we're saying, come on in the name of Jesus, earth, you belong to me. Amen? In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All the wealth, all the health, everything belongs to us. We are the rightful owners of this earth. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. If you're a joint heir with Jesus, how much of the inheritance do you get? Join heirs with him. And the thing is, we're not looking at a half a million dollars. We're not, okay, so, so I've got, uh, I've got uh, two brothers and one sister. And so when we just split our inheritance, we have to split that four ways. Amen? And so if, if, if there's a certain amount of money, you slice it that way. Amen? Because there's, a, there's a, a, a definite amount of money. So you divide that by four, and here, here's, your, here's your lot. Okay, well, let me ask you this. How much does God have? Say inexhaustible. Inexhaustible. So when, you, when he cuts you your portion, if you believe it, there is no limit to what God will do. The problem is not with the limitation of God. The problem is with the limitation of our faith. Amen? <laughs> Say praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you, we're still moving down here. We're still down here with these little mountains. But God says... It shall come to pass in the latter day that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains. He's going to be over every mountain, amen? And shall be exalted above the hills, and the peoples shall flow to it, amen? And so when, 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 the, when the government of God really gets established and you believe it, is it natural for things to flow uphill? Or is that supernatural? The gravity is going to pull them down. But the Lord is so all-powerful and almighty that, that they're going to flow uphill. It's, it's, it's not a demotion. It's a huge promotion that now I'm not living under the limitations of the world, but now I stand on the mountain of God. I am the mountain of God. I am in the government of God, and I have no limitations, and I am blessed. Amen? Say, I'm blessed. I mean, the thing is, you know, a lot of people think, you know, if I get a house, then I'll be happy, or if I get a a really good look, looking, looking woman, I'll be happy. Or if I, you know, if I have a, a Mercedes, I'll be happy. Or if I have this, I'll be happy. But I'll tell you, you can have all those things without the Lord, and they mean nothing. None of those things are wrong. God wants you to live right. He wants you to be blessed. He doesn't care what you drive. He doesn't care how expensive the house you live in. But you've got to have God. But when you have God, everything's good. Amen? You are blessed. God has put a blessing on you. It's on the mountain of God. And, you, and so that's what's happening now. God's saying, I'm establishing my mountain. It's not that the mountain is not on the earth already. Is the kingdom of God here? Yes. Is the kingdom of God already in the earth? Yes. It is already in the earth, but he's establishing it. But he establishes us through us. He establishes the mountain through us. When you know that you're a son of God, it takes courage to stand in your place and say, no. It's this way. Is it uncomfortable? It is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to stand in your place. If you have, if you have contentious teenagers, it's uncomfortable. It'll almost wear you out to keep coming back and say, no, but it's this way. It's this way. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. See, I'm, I'm bumping into it with my grandkids now. 
I've been through one loop, and here I'm getting a, now I'm getting re-looped into it again. Same spirits, amen? Same spirits, same day, same time, amen? Same bat channel. They just keep coming, amen? And so I'm just telling you, God says, if you will humble yourself under my mighty hand, I'm going to exalt you in due time. You don't have to be rebellious to the people I've placed in your life. I just want you to flow in my spirit, and I'll take care of you. And if you have unfair bosses or you have unfair parents, pray for them anyway. You keep yourself in line with me. You keep yourself in line with me, and I will bless you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so uh, look at Colossians 1, 12 and 13. You know, I tell you, I, I, I had unforgiveness for a long time towards my dad because dad just left us, and he didn't provide for us. Is it a father's place to provide? That's what God said, right? He that, doesn't, he, he that doesn't provide for his household is worse than an unbeliever. So you can be a believer, but if you don't do these most basic things that God says to do, he says you're, you're, the heaven's going to be close to you. The blessings that I say are yours, heaven's shut off from you. Because he said, he that doesn't provide for his household is worse than an unbeliever. Well, when dad left, he, ne he didn't take care of us, never a Christmas card, never a birthday card, never anything. Never nothing. Never advice. Never counsel. Nothing. <laughs> well, heaven was shut off to him for a long, long time until he was, until he was dying. The blessings and, and the favor of God was shut off to him because he said, I'm not going to pay attention to what that word says. I know I ought to be taking care of my, my kids that I brought into the world, but I disregard that. When you disregard what God says, God's not going to fight with you. You just get shut off. Amen? Do you want the blessings of God? You, you want to be a, a hind end to your parents? You're going to get shut off because he said re, that's the first commandment with promise that you honor your father and your mother. Are they hard? Is it hard to honor a father who abandons you? Yes, it was. And, I, you know, I didn't honor him for years. And then the Lord said, you've got to honor him. You've got to pray for him. I was going down the highway right here, and, and, and I've been saved for 15 years, and, I, and the, the Lord spoke to me as clear as a bell. He said, you never pray to the Father. You always call me Jesus. I said, well, you are Jesus. You are my Lord. He said, yeah, but the Father, he's good. He's the one that made, he's the one that made me flesh. He's the one that I trusted when I died for. He said, why don't you pray to the Father one time? And I said, as I did, I was right there, right out here, right out here in front of that bookstore. And I said, oh, Father. And when I did, I tell you, I started crying so loud. I had to pull off the rope. I had to pull off the road that I was just heaving and going, ah, and I was just wailing and crying because it was the unforgiveness that had been vented up in me for years and years and years. But then stuff started breaking because God says, I'll restore sevenfold. I'll be a good dad to you. You want a good dad? I'll be your dad. And I am not going to leave you nor forsake you. Amen? So you got, sometimes you have to just get rid of this stuff that the enemy has sown in you to try to prevent you from getting the fullness of the blessing of God. Amen? You can build up walls and stuff, but God says, just do what I tell you to do, and I'll bless you mightily. Giving thanks to the Father. The Father has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints of light. And he has delivered us from the power of darkness, and he has conveyed us, he has transferred us in the, the kingdom. Say, I'm in the kingdom. He has transferred us. We're not going to be in the kingdom. We are in the kingdom of God. Say kingdom one more time. Kingdom. We are in the kingdom of God. We're in the United States, but we are in the kingdom of God, and we have access into everything that God has. Amen? By faith. Amen? You want natural results, you want supernatural results. I got to tell this. Barry said, okay, I'll put 150 in. He got a $15,000 check. Do <laughs> you want natural results? You want supernatural results. Huh? What do you want? You want put 150 in, get 300 back? You want to put 150 in, get 15 grand back? Amen? I mean, is that supernatural? 
See, I break that. I break that limitation mindset that's, that's in us. That I can't be blessed. Say, I can be blessed. Can be blessed. Say this, I am, blessed. I am blessed. See, God's trying to establish you at the top of the mountain. You're not a cave dweller. You're at the top of the mountain. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And we're in the kingdom of the Son of His love. He loves you just like He loves Jesus. And He said, but... but but, I'm, but I want you to get it. I want you just to do Just do what I tell you. When I tell you, husbands, love your wives. Love them. Take care of them. When I say, wives, submit to your husband. Say, well, I don't know how this house would run if I didn't run it. That's what it, I've got to run this thing. If I don't run it, everything's not going to, you know, well, I'm going to tell you, that's the devil talking. No, look, look at him. I'm going to come. Boy, I tell you what, there's a, Head spinning around and spitting out pea soup on that one. I'm not naming names, but I'm telling you. You backslidden buzzards, you. Okay. And so we're in, we're in a whole new kingdom. We're in the kingdom of God. We can't act like we're in the world anymore. Amen? If God says this is the way my house is run, and that's what I brought this book in to read. Okay. So if you want to blame somebody... Blame Ola, whatever his name is. <laughs> okay. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. In, in the first home instituted by God in the Garden of Eden, Adam was the head of the government. A government's just how I'm going to run it. A government's just a way. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. And God presented Eve and, and God presented Eve to him to be under his government. And God's never said do it another way. Amen. And, and I, I hear in the spirit, I can't do that. God says, You can do it. Just like Carolyn Leaf said, you're in superposition, right? Right? You're in superposition. You you have the spirit of God. When you choose to do something, you can do it. You know why people, you know wives aren't why wives aren't submitted to their husbands? Because they want to be the boss. I'm telling you, this, is, this stuff's not mysterious. Amen. I want to be the boss. And you know, with all this transgender stuff going on, you know what? Well, I am the boss. I'm just in the wrong body. Well, you know, you you ain't the boss. You're not the boss. Hey, you, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. This is like, oh boy, I'm getting, I'm getting folded arms now. Lord have mercy, protect me, Lord. Encamp the angels about me, Lord. Yeah, I know I need. I tell you, it's just, it's just the way it is. But the Lord has qualified us. Amen. Are you qualified for the kingdom of God? God has qualified you. How did he qualify you? Jesus' job was to do what? To take away your sin, to take away your rebellion, to take away your death, to take away your poverty, to take away your diseases. Amen? That was Jesus' job. Amen? Did he do it? Your job's to believe it and do it. Do you believe it? Then do it. Amen? Can you do it? Wives, can you submit to your husbands? many heads shaking there's still some heads spinning but they ain't many shaking I'm going to call the janitor to clean up the pea soup <laughs> amen so look at uh, Mark 4 35 is this too hard yeah. <laughs> yeah I can tell okay on the same day when Jesus had come, he said to them, let's cross over to the other side. So they're just looking for a little smooth boat ride, okay? And when they had left the multitude, they took him along in a boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. Now a great windstorm arose. Now we're in a windstorm on the earth right now. And what the devil wants, what the devil wants you to think is, we're in trouble. We're not in trouble. We are not in trouble. The government of God is backing you up. And they're not going to leave you anywhere. God is here. God is behind you. God is for you. 
Amen? You've got to know that. And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. And he was in the stern, Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a pillow, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he arose and he rebuked the wind and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Is that all we got, brother? You got another one? And Okay, so then he said to them, Why are you so fearful? Why are you afraid? Is God for you? Is God with you? Is God with you? Then why are you afraid? And that's a, that's a question for everybody. What are you worrying about? You're in the government of God. God is for you. You're in in approachable light. You just stay in faith, and you just keep believing God, and no evil shall befall you. You say, well, there's evil befalling me. The Lord's going to get it out. Amen? It's not going to It's not gonna overtake you. How is it that you have no faith? Now, you know, the boat's ready to sink. I mean, they're thinking, We're, we are dead men. We are going to die. You know, there's, there's no amount of money that's going to help this. Would you agree? If those, if those disciples would say, Lord, we need, we need money. There's no amount of money going to help this. There's no skill, no matter what, what kind of person you are to be able to handle ships or boats. There's nothing in a natural skill that's going to help them, right? But see, Jesus is in another government. He's in a government that can speak to that storm and say, peace, be still. Amen? Because I'm going to tell you that storm didn't come from God. And Jesus spoke to that spirit. And he said, peace, be still. And that storm stopped. Amen? And let me tell you something. The Lord just quickened this in me. Fathers, if you give your place up, there's a demon going to fill it. Mothers, if you give your place up, a demon's going to step in there and fill it. Amen? Whatever, whatever you refuse to step into, whatever you refuse to stand in the authority God has given you as a person on the earth, if you vacate that, it will be filled by a demon spirit. Amen? And God says, you can't afford to vacate. You have to stand in the authority that I've given you in the earth. And he said, I've given you my spirit. All you have to do is have courage. Say courage. courage. Say, I have courage. It's going to take courage for us to stand and to, and to be able to, 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 to do the things and to say the things that we need to say in this hour because there is a, an onslaught. There is a great windstorm of antichrist winds blowing on the earth. Amen? You think terrorism's coming to the United States? It's here. It's here. When you're going into bars and shooting people in Orlando, it's here. Amen? But we're, we're, gonna, we're coming back and we're going to say, peace be still. And we're going to speak to those people who are under the cloak of Islam. And we say, come out into his light in Jesus' name. Amen? Praise the Lord. Okay. So uh, Mark 9, 17. Nothing's impossible to us. Amen? Would you agree? Would you agree? There's nothing impossible to you. The only thing we have to do is to say, I am a part of the government of God, and here's what God says. But make sure that you are doing the basic thing. You don't, you don't want to, you don't want to be, you, you're not going to get disqualified from heaven. Don't get me wrong. But your house is not going to come into order unless it comes into the order that God says it must be in. Does that make sense? You're not going to be able to not discipline your children and them escape a lot of trouble. They're going to have trouble. Is it harder to discipline? Is it easier just to blow it off and to let your kids run wild? It's easier. But it is not right. But it takes courage to stand in your place and say, no, it's this way. It's this way. And God has put that authority in you. Will you be unpopular sometimes? 
you be unpopular sometimes. But I'm going to tell you this. If you don't do it, the demons will fill that spot. And they'll fill it with every kind of, every kind of confusion that you can imagine. I, I, I told him on Wednesday night, the, the enemy is so underhanded. He's so ruthless. He's such a murderer. He has zero love. He is a murderer. But, but when Joe Osteen's mom was diagnosed with cancer, they gave her two weeks to live. And, and they told her, you know, get your stuff in order. And she said she was so sick that when she was in the hospital, that John, her husband, prayed for her the whole time she was in the hospital because she was just so nauseous and so sick that she couldn't. And so, but when she got home, she said the Lord spoke to her and said, now you've got to pray for yourself. If you're going to live, you can't depend on John and his prayers. And he was a powerful man of God. But you have to believe it, and you have to, you have to stand on yourself, and you have to believe yourself, and you have to say yourself. If you're going to live, you have to do this and not John. And so she started doing that, and she started saying all the healing scriptures over her. And she said, I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. They gave her two weeks to live. And she said, you know, weeks went by. She still wasn't gaining weight. She was still yellow. She was still sick, but she was still alive. But she said one day she was looking. She was in bed. She was so sick she couldn't move. She looks over in the closet, and there's a pink dress hanging there. And she said these words came through her mind. That is the dress. You're, they're going to bury you. I'm just going to tell you the devil is a liar, and he wants you to believe his lies. But she picked it up as a lie from the devil, and she said, no, I shall live and not die. I'm going to tell you, it's been 36 years. They gave her two weeks. It's been 36 years. She's alive and well. Amen? Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave.